In this video walkthrough lesson, we're going to continue our fractions module. And this is lesson number 5-1-8a, subtracting fractions and mixed numbers. And this time we'll have unlike denominators and regrouping. We'll continue our word problem series, and you'll see these standards featured in this video. We'll be using this worksheet, and you can go to worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com to print out a copy for yourself. You'll find it under our fractions video walkthroughs, and it's entitled Fractions Module Lesson number 5-1-8a. We have some directions. Solve the following fraction word problem. Show your work using numbers, pictures, and words. Let's get started. Bill spent two and one-third hours on the half pipe preparing for the snowboard tournament. He spent one and three-fourths hours working on straight airs and grabs. He used the rest of his time working on spins and inverted hand plants. How much time did Bill spend on inverted hand plants and spins? Well, first of all, you probably see something right at the end of this word problem. We've seen this a lot lately. And at the end of this word problem, you can see right here in question form is our math job. If you're thinking that, good for you. And we have to figure out how much time, so we're looking at how much time Bill did spend on inverted hand plants and spins. So there's a couple different types of moves he's pulling off in practice. And we want to focus in on how much time he spent doing these particular moves. So we'll go through sentence by sentence and tease out the math clues. First sentence, Bill spent two and one-third hours. You're probably thinking... Ah, a math clue right there, two and one-third hours. And there's our label, hours, on the half pipe preparing for the snowboard tournament. So that's how much he spent total, okay, preparing for the tournament. Next sentence. He spent one and three-fourths hours working on straight airs and grabs. So you can see that. So, so he spent one and three-fourths hours working just on straight airs and grabs. And then this next sentence, let's use a different color. He used the rest of his time, so we're looking at the rest. So he used the rest, and if you're thinking the remainder, that's a big clue, the rest means remainder, the rest of his time working on spins and inverted hand plants. And that's exactly what we're looking for down here. Inverted hand plants and spins. So how much time did he spend on that? Well, the rest of his time. So we'll take the information that we know. Right off the bat, we know that he spent two and one third hours total on the half by pre preparing for the tournament. And we also know right over here he spent one and three fourths. So one and three fourths of his time working on straight airs and grabs. And then we also know that he used the rest of his time up here. It says the rest of his time working on those other two tricks we're trying to focus in on. So you can start with this total here, two and one third hours total. And we know that he, and we know that Bill used one and three fourths hours working on the other two moves. So the remainder of the time is what we're looking for. So if you're thinking that we should subtract, you'd be absolutely correct and good for you. Now when we're we're subtracting mixed numbers. We have two and one third and one and three fourths. You really want to zero in on those fractions. So the the fractional part of your mixed number. We've got one third minus three-fourths. Now if you're thinking, oh, well, I know we need to have the same denominators when we add or subtract fractions, you'd be exactly right. So somehow we have to take one-third and three-fourths and come up with the same denominator. Well, let's use the mathematical method first. And we've been working lately on finding LCM. So we've got the least common multiple for our two denominators over here of three and four. So if we find the multiples of those, we should be able to find our lowest common multiple. 
So here we go. We've got three that we need to find multiples for. So well, three times one is the first multiple would be three. Three times two would be six. Three times three would be nine. You see a little skip counting going on there. Three, six, nine. So multiples of three. You could also think in terms of skip counting. Three times four would equal 12. And you might be thinking something right off the bat. But let's, let's check our work here to see what our least common multiple would be. And we'll take a look at the other denominator over there, the four. And we'll find multiples of four. So we've got four times one equals four. Four times two equals eight. Four times three equals four, eight, twelve. You're probably thinking, good for you. So that would be a twelve. To fix that too. There we go. All right. And you, have you noticed something? Do we have a least common multiple? Well, look at that. The first multiple we came upon was the 12. So right here, 3 times 4 equals 12, and 4 times 3 equal 12, equals 12, so giving us an LCM of 12. And once you found your LCM, you found your new denominator. So now we need to take those fractional parts again. Again, we're dealing with 1 third and 3 fourths. We want to take those and make equivalent fractions that we could subtract. Equivalent fractions with a denominator of 12 now. So let's do this down below. Make a little space for us. Bump that right back up there. So we're working with the fractions 1 third and 3 fourths. We want to set, like I said, we want to set those equal to a fraction with a denominator of 12. So we're making equivalent fractions. We've done this before. So now we can think to ourselves, okay, for each of these, you can see that we have both denominators. Okay, we've got 3 and 12 as our denominators. And now for these two, we have 4 and 12 as our denominator. So we can work with those. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, what can we do to this 3 to make it equal 12? Well, 3 times, look at this, you've got your work over here, 3 times 4 equals 12, so we can use that to our advantage. So we will, so we know that 3 times 4 equals 12, and we're, we want to do the same to the denominator that you do to the numerator, so we'll treat that numerator the same. So that will be times 4 above, so 1 times 4 would be 4, and now we'll go down and, and approach this second fraction the same way. So we've got 4. What can we do to 4 to equal 12? Well, we've already done the work over here on the side. 4 times 3, we know. You know 4 times 3 equals 12. 4 times 3. We'll do the same to the numerator. And then here we can calculate our numer numerator. So 4 times 3 equals 12. Then 3 times 3 equals 9. And now we're working with something that we can subtract. Maybe. <laughs> we'll look, look at the next step. Okay, we've got, now we can rewrite these up above. 2 and 1 third is equal to 2 and 4 twelfths. And, and now we look down below, we know that 1 and 3 fourths is equal to 1 and 9 twelfths down here. 1 and 9 twelfths. And then you can subtract, right? <clears throat> well, you might be thinking, Ooh, wait a minute here. We've seen something like this before, but hmm, not with a mixed number. You've got four twelves. Can you subtract nine twelves from it? No, absolutely not. We have to do a little regrouping here. So let's do that. We'll regroup. We'll, we'll regroup this two in the ones place. So leaving one up above. We're going to add one whole. Okay, we're going to borrow one whole and add it to four twelfths. So you might be thinking, okay, if we're, we're thinking in terms of twelfths, we can do that. So twelve twelfths would be equal to one whole, wouldn't it? And we already have four twelfths, so we, if, we, if we added four twelfths 
plus 4 twelfths. That would definitely would equal 12. If you can read that, sorry about that. 12 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. 12 twelfths plus 4 twelfths would equal 16 twelfths, wouldn't it? 12 plus 4 equals 16, so we can rewrite that. Now we've got 16 twelfths. And now we're gonna we need to subtract. And we can do this now. We've got 16 twelfths minus 9 twelfths. Okay, you're probably thinking, ah, I definitely can do that. Absolutely you can. So when we're subtracting fractions, we have the same denominator. Our denominators stay the same, and then we subtract those numerators. So 16 minus 9 would be 7. So 7 twelfths. Then we and we take a look over here at this 1 minus 1. And naturally, you're probably thinking, ah, that would be 0, and you'd be right again. So how much time did Bill spend on inverted hand plants and spins? Well, he spent 7 twelfths, 7 twelfths of an hour. There you go. We'll put that in a complete sentence in a bit. And let, but let's work on the pictorial or visual fraction model next. We still have the total time he worked on tricks. It's two and one third hours. And he worked on the other two tricks, one and three fourths hours. And we've realized that that would be equal to one and if you look back, we've got over here that we noticed that it was worth 1 and 16 twelfths. So, so 1 and 16 twelfths. And we subtracted from that 1 and 9 twelfths. Well, let's show what this would look like visually. So we're going to start off, and we know that Bill spent one two and one third hours working on tricks all together so we had one whole hour that's the second hour and then we have one third of another hour that he spent working on tricks. So we've got one third hour here. So this part would be one third. And now we needed to take away one and three fourths, which we found was equal to one and nine twelfths. So we can do that. So now let's try to take away our nine twelfths first. We have one third, we have to change this into 12 equal parts. So best way to do that would be to subdivide across horizontally. So now we want to have divided subdivide it by 4 here. Okay, if you thought think of our original denominators, you can see that we had 3 and 4. So we started off with three columns representing thirds and we're going to subdivide it across this way, kind of representing that other denominator. And we'll end up with 12 equal parts. You can see them. See them right here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now we've got 4 twelfths, and we need to take away 9 or subtract 9 twelfths from that. 1 and 9 twelfths. So let's, let's take a look at how we can do this. So we've got 4 twelfths here. We've got 1, 2, 3, four twelfths, and then we'll have to divide this next hour up here, formerly the second hour. We'll divide that up into twelfths as well. So again, we'll divide it in thirds first of all, and then subdivide it by four, giving us twelve equal parts. And now you can see that second hour is divided into twelfths, and we need, so far we had four twelfths down below here. We had these four twelfths. And we wanted to take away a total of nine twelfths. So though, here we go. We've got, let me just stick with our original color. Okay, so four twelfths plus one, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, eight twelfths, and then nine twelfths, leaving you with this area right here left over. 
So far we've subtracted. You can see we subtracted 16 twelfths. We had to break up or regroup our, our hole over there, our second hole over there. We broke it up into twelves. And down here we, we started off with this third. We had to subdivide the whole thing. And, and now we were thinking in terms of twelves. That was four twelves plus five twelves that we took away. So nine twelves we took away in total. So you can see that here, 16 twelfths minus 9 twelfths, leaving us with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 twelfths. So we have 7 twelfths left over down there. So that would be 7 twelfths. And now we have to go back to our whole numbers here. Now we have 1 whole minus one whole, you're probably thinking, ah, so we, how, how can we show that with our drawing? I bet you know, if there's one whole left there, we have to get rid of that, we'll subtract that, leaving us with our seven twelves back there, our seven twelves. So now, that's exactly what we got the first time around with our mathematical model, so now we have seven twelves. So in our math job, we had to figure out how much time did Bill spend on inverted hand plants and spins. Well, we can see now that Bill spent 7 twelfths of an hour working on inverted hand plants and spins. Now you can see in our problem here, we have numbers in our mathematical model, pictures in our area model, and words in our complete sentence. Solving our math job, we have a well-rounded answer. And look at that, pretty happy student. That was a quick look at subtracting fractions and mixed numbers with unlike denominators and regrouping in a word problem. Thanks for checking out worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>